Okay, so in the last video, we built this data set where we have uh, our bank's charge-offs with the macroeconomic variables uh, from the Federal Reserve, historical data uh, from most recently back to 1990 or as far back as your bank goes. Okay, um, in the meantime, I also created a, a couple more variables just so that we can also, once we're once we're doing this analysis, control for um, the recessions, and I'll talk about how we think about these variables once we do the analysis. But these are what we call a dummy variable, and they're just zero during the quarters that it was not a recession, and one during the quarters in which it was a recession. Okay, so from quarter four, 2007 to quarter two. Uh, 2009, we were in the Great Recession. I grabbed these from the NBER, National Bureau of Economic uh, Research. So I've got the the 2001 recession and then the, the Great Recession here. Okay, so just a one and a zero, ones during the recessions, zeros otherwise. All right. Okay, so we're going to be doing a regression analysis here uh, to use these macroeconomic uh, variables to explain charge-offs. Let me rename that. Uh, it's still key bank. So we're going to be explaining charge-offs uh, really quickly, just as uh, either a refresher or uh, a brief primer on what regression analysis actually is. Uh, let me let me take a very simplified version of this. Suppose we weren't using un, um, all all ten or twelve of these variables, but just some unemployment rate. So we're using the unemployment rate to explain charge offs. All right. So what we could do is set that up um, as an equation here. So our regression equation, and actually specifically in this, we're we're doing linear regression. So what we're going to try to do is is use a line and then the slope of that line uh, on this relationship between unemployment and charge-offs. And obviously unemployment is not the only thing that's going to be affecting a bank's loan charge-offs. There are going to be a lot of other things too. Um, that's going to be in the error term. Okay, um, so if we were just doing this with only unemployment, we could think about this graphically, all right? And we could take every observation that we have with unemployment and with charge-offs and, and look at the relationship there. Okay, so if we come back to our data, all right, we've got some unemployment rates in the 4% 4, 4 range associated with uh, about 80 80, 85 um, million in charge-offs, or, yeah, uh, so four with 80, we've got five with um, 60 or so, seven with, with 80, seven and a half with 700. So we're going to plot these, and we would do this for every single quarter. Uh, so we had four with about upper 70s, and we had eight with up in the 100s. We have um, we have even even higher rates during the uh, once we're whoops once we're getting toward the recession periods, where we've got uh, very high unemployment rates. So nine percent with 190 200 uh, 200 million in charge offs. So as the unemployment rate goes up, up in around, around nine, we're getting too much higher charge-off rates. Okay, so if we plotted all of those variables, we would we would get something yeah, resembling something like this, suppose. Okay, and what we're going to be doing is estimating a line with this equation, because uh, ultimately, this we can think of this as really the equation of a line y is equal to b plus mx is, is how we're traditionally taught the equation of a line uh, so we're going to be estimating this intercept 
and calling that alpha, and we're going to be estimating the slope of that line with beta, and in this case, x is unemployment. All right, but then we have this error, and so we're going to want to minimize the error. So there are a lot of lines that we could draw. Um, we want to find the line that's going to give us the, the smallest amount of error. So here's, for example, one line that we could draw to see, is this the relationship is this the best fitting relationship between unemployment and charge-offs? Well, if we look at the error, uh, these are going to be lar very large errors, all right? And if we, if we want to minimize the error, we can do a lot better than that. So instead of using that line to fit this data, we could more so use a line like this, all right? And we're going to have much smaller errors in our estimation. Um, and so then ultimately what that's going to do is that line, I should extend it, it's going to give us an intercept, all right? This intercept here is going to be alpha, whatever, whatever we find. And then the slope of this line, it's going to be the effect of unemployment on charge-offs, that beta, all right? So if we, so we interpret beta as if we increase the unemployment rate by 1%, then that's going to have a beta increase in student loans, or not student loans, uh, charge-offs. Okay, um, so this equation is what we're going to be estimating in Excel. Uh, that's going to do all the work for us, and I'm going to show you now uh, how we're going to do that with our data. Okay, so... Charge-offs, that's the variable we're interested in, uh, and these are all of our independent variables is what we call them. And then we're going to come over here to the data tab and use this data analysis tool pack. If you don't have that, um, you probably do have it, but it's not uh, activated. Just go to File Options and come here to Add-ins, Excel Add-ins, and go. Okay, so make sure this analysis tool pack is checked, and then you'll have it here in the data tab. Okay, we're going to do a regression, and our y range, this is y uh, is equal to basically b plus mx, right? So y is our charge-offs, x are all of our independent variables. I'm including the labels here. Um, and then make sure you're grabbing all of the data. You can start with the label and just do control shift down and over to be sure. Um, and then make sure our labels are checked here and then everything else is everything else is fine. Uh, just leave it as is for now. Okay, hit OK. And we're gonna get the regression output. All right, so um, for example, if if we were only using unemployment, um, this coefficient, ultimately this, this column of coefficients is going to be something that we're interested in. Um, this unemployment coefficient is saying that, well, let's get some, let's get some numbers attached to this. Uh, Okay, so the coefficient on unemployment rate is about 70,000. So that's the beta. That's the beta that we estimated. It's the 70,000. And so that's saying that if we increase the unemployment rate by 1%, holding everything else equal, then charge-offs would increase by about 70 million in this case. We're talking about millions. So, so increase unemployment rate by 1%. Then we're going to increase charge-offs by beta, um, and in this case, the beta is about 70 million. Okay, so we have all of these effects. Um, the way we interpret these recession effects that uh, I threw in here, because they're just a one or a zero. All right, here we here we are. So one or a zero. So this is just saying that during the Great Recession, during the Great Recession. Charge-offs were 300 million 
larger than during the quarters that we were not in the Great Recession. And during the, the 2001 recession, charge-offs were higher as well. So those make sense. Okay, uh, we could get into analyzing the significance of these exact coefficients uh, with the p-values, but we're not going to worry too much about that. Um, because we're going to be using these this model to predict charge-offs in the future, uh, what we're actually a little bit more interested in is over here in the... Um, R squared. So the R squared is basically a, a measurement that tells us how well our model does at explaining charge-offs. And so this 0.69 is telling us that uh, the variation in charge-offs, uh, our, our model using these 12 variables explains about 69% of the variation in charge-offs. So there are still some things that that uh, we haven't accounted for. Uh, if we wanted to, we could try to throw some more variables in the model to, to increase this. Uh, in general, for prediction, kind of the higher the better for our squared. But um, but this will do. This will do for now. So. We're going to use these coefficients uh, in the next video to um, apply them to the, to the Federal Reserve hypothetical market shock scenarios. And then using that, we can, we can look to see how well our banks perform under those shocks. Okay, I'm going to save that for the next video. Uh, leave this here for now. Um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll pick it up from there.